Now, in most years, passing a balanced budget is our only true single constitutional obligation. But once every 10 years, the legislature is required to reapportion voters into state legislative and congressional districts. We've spent the last half year engaged in a continuous redistricting process. And we've gone to extraordinary lengths to make that process open, transparent, and accessible. And by any and every conceivable metric, we are light years beyond what has ever been done in any previous redistricting process. But then this redistricting process is unlike any before it, because we have the standards, new standards, added to the Constitution by Amendments 5 and 6. Now, it is no secret that I was not a supporter of those amendments. But that became irrelevant on Election Day, members. Once the voters approved those amendments, they became a part of our Constitution. And as such, we have a legal and a moral obligation to follow the letter of the law, and we will. Chairman Weatherford has done an exceptional job navigating uncharted waters while performing an arduous, thankless task. Working with the subcommittee co-chairs and vice chairs, he has crafted House and State House and congressional maps that are compact, that protect the rights of minorities to elect candidates of their choice, and that respect political and geographical boundaries. But as a consequence of complying with the Constitution, the House maps may well inconvenience, frustrate, or perhaps even end the political ambitions of good, hardworking, conscientious members. Because unfortunately here, more than anywhere else, the conflict exists between the politics of personal preference and the rule of law. Now, if the Founding Fathers understood that the rule of law was necessary to ensure that government did not simply become the vehicle for personal agendas, they also understood that adherence to that rule of law would take more than an honor system. And so they introduced the doctrines of separation of powers and checks and balances. Sometimes, the Constitution's checks and balances require the legislature to act to curb the excesses and errors of other branches of government. Other times, however, we are not the heroes of the story because it's the legislature that has failed to get it just right. 